if we just continued to make tartan kilts that had to be worn with the frilly French shirt and the black dress jacket, that it would die out because the youth of today don't want to dress like that. Welcome to the A Midlife Traveler podcast, where we want you to go see the world, discover interesting stories about people, places, and practical advice to help you plan your next vacation. Hey, hello, and thank you so much for joining us to listen to the A Midlife Traveler podcast. We are in season one, which is largely focused on Scotland and on sharing Scotland with you through the voice and the opinions and the mind of a Scotsman named James. My name is Laura, and I am your host. And these next couple of episodes we have are focused on the kilt, the Scottish kilt. And that is one of the perennial curiosities, it seems, that we Americans have, is a man in a kilt. Why would he possibly choose to wear a kilt? And what is underneath his kilt? Well, what you're going to hear today is James's voice and story talking about how he grew up wearing the kilt and a bit about his tailor and modern kilt fashion. And I think it's important to bring up or you know, remind you perhaps at this point that James is a person who is a proud Scotsman who loves sharing his heritage and he grew up wearing the kilt. He's comfortable in a kilt. He's not wearing a kilt to be a cheesy tourist attraction and in fact the type of kilt he was wearing was very different from what I saw um perhaps the people that were the guys that were just on the street wearing like plaid kilts and bagpipes with you know hats out for money so James's kilt looked more like a common daily fashion it was like a brown tweed fashionable kilt as opposed to this fancy pants dress that I saw some people on the street wearing for money so it's kind of a cool story and before you get to listen to this I just want to bring up that if you do a google image search and you type in the word men in kilts you are going to find some pretty interesting photos. But one of the photos that you're probably going to find for sure in the top search results is of a man named Howie Nicholsby and a company called 21st Century Kilts. And according to the article I read, Howie has not worn pants since the year 2000. And I learned about Howie's company through James. You're going to hear his story. And without further ado, here is James telling you his story of how he grew up wearing the kilt and telling you a hilariously awesome story about his tailor, Howie Nicholsby, and his company, 21st Century Kilts. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks. I mean, I grew up, you know, on the islands. and You know, it's not that I never wore pants. I mean, I do wear pants, but... You know, I wore the kilt quite a lot. I would wear it to church every Sunday when we got taken to church. Um, any friends' birthdays or anything like that, I would wear the kilt. Gathering of the clans, wear the kilt. Certain days of the year, if I'm doing field work, depending on the temperature, I would wear the kilt. Um, so you don't wear it, you didn't wear it to work in regular? It, it, would just it would depend on what I was doing in the field, you know. Um, generally, if I'm doing machine work, I, I wouldn't wear my kilt. I'm too worried about something getting sucked in or caught. So generally, if I'm doing machine work, tillage or anything, I normally wear quite tight pants so that nothing gets caught in the machinery. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a daily dress. It's, it's certainly not something that's just supposed to be worn on special occasions. Howie, the, the chap that, that makes my kilts, they have uh, one of the oldest kilt shops on the Royal Mile, which is called Joffrey Taylor's. Howie, the son, he has his own shop in Thistle Street, which is called 21st Century Kilts. And uh, Howie always had this idea that if we just continued to make tartan kilts that had to be worn with the frilly French shirt and the black dress jacket, that it would die out because the youth of today don't want to dress like that. So he started to produce block-coloured kilts, uh, uh, fashionable kilts that could be worn casually with hoodies or to try and encourage 
the sort of younger people to look at the kilt as, as, as a fashionable item. And he's been very, very successful. But this would cause a huge falling out between Howie and his father. Because his father's a traditional kilt maker and Howie's first contract, paid contract, for kilt making was for the Australian Mardi Gras and it was 22 pink see-through PVC kilts. <laughs> and it, it made it big on the internet and his dad was hugely embarrassed about it, you know, and almost disowned his son until Howie explained to his father just how much money he charged them for them. And he went, really? He went, oh yeah. He said, I've also got a man called Vin Diesel coming to see me for a leather kilt. And his dad went, okay, all is forgiven. <laughs> so he'll make you a kilt out of anything. Um, when I went to, to Canada, um, I wanted to try and kind of fit in a bit with the farm boys. And I realised John Deere in Canada, it's a big fashion thing. It's not just farm machinery. The boys have all got their John Deere t-shirts and the John Deere hats. So... I got the colours, I asked what the pigment colours were for the green and the yellow in John Deere, sent it to Howie, so Howie made me a green John Deere kilt, and he put the, the yellow deer in between the pleats, so when I was walking, when the, the pleats opened up, you could see the yellow, the yellow deer, so just trying to fit in with the locals, you know. So he'll make a kilt, he'll honestly make a kilt out of anything, he's, he's such, a, such a talented man.